This week, disgraced Orange County Supervisor Andrew Doe agreed to resign and plead guilty to his role in a bribery scheme. U.S. attorneys accused Doe of stealing millions of taxpayer dollars during the pandemic by using his authority to steer the money toward his family and friends. Doe faces a maximum of five years in federal prison, and this was all the result of a months-long investigation. Joining us now is LAS correspondent Nick Gerarda. Thank you so much for joining us and great reporting. Thank you so much. Great to be here. So I understand you broke this story all based on a tip a year ago. Tell us how this got on your radar. Yeah, so this all started about a year ago when I got a tip. I almost missed it, actually. I didn't call the person back, but then went through my, my old phone logs and decided to call them back. And what they were saying is that Supervisor Doe's then 22-year-old daughter, uh, that county contractors were being told they needed to hire her for mental health, to provide mental health services, her organization, even though she did not have experience doing that kind of service um, and was a full-time law student, and that there were millions of dollars he was directing uh, to her organization. So I went and looked through public records um, and connected dots and saw that there was something there, that Supervisor Doe was awarding money to his daughter's group without disclosing the family connection. I kept digging, filed lots of public records requests, now of over 70 requests, thousands of documents we've gone through, and we were able to break a series of stories about a year ago uh, into, the, into the new year about how Supervisor Doe had directed these funds, didn't disclose the family relationship, and that required information about where the money was going, how it was being spent, was completely missing, violating the contract requirements, uh, millions and millions of dollars. And we additionally found that he had directed millions in, you know, outside of public view to this group. We, we had no idea. In fact, his colleagues did not even know how much money uh, was going to, that he was directing to his daughter's group. Again, with, with very little to no transparency about what ultimately those dollars were being, you know, what, what was happening with them. It was supposed to be feeding uh, the most vulnerable in his district, which at the time was had the largest impoverished population in Orange County. It was supposed to be feeding uh, seniors who were in need uh, during the pandemic, um, and as well as uh, mental health services and building a Vietnam War memorial. I've seen this called Robin Hood in reverse, is what somebody uh, has been calling the case. Uh, he did accept a plea, a guilty plea. Can we talk more about the consequences he's now facing moving forward? Yeah, so he's looking at up to five years in federal prison, um, and uh, his daughter um, has uh, admitted to criminal wrongdoing in connection with this around the mortgage she took out on a home, a million-dollar home that she purchased in Tustin that we investigated as well. Uh, and investigators said that they first caught on to this through media reports. Um, but yeah, so he's looking at up to five years in prison um, over uh, his uh, guilty uh, agreement to plead guilty to a, a fel federal felony around um, conspiracy to commit bribery. The Federal authorities say he received over half a million dollars in kickbacks um, and bribes <clears throat> um, through the taxpayer money that was going to this nonprofit group, his daughter's nonprofit, that would then be funneled back to his family is the way that the, um, the federal authorities are describing it. Seems like a pretty good deal given that it was taxpayer money and the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. um, what is the process now of filling his vacant seat? So there is an election coming up. It's actually going on right now for his seat. He was termed out. Um, he was going to be out of office in early January anyways, although he was running, uh, planning, he had a committee open to run for state treasurer. But he, uh, so he's going to be out of, he was going to be out of office and there's an election to replace him. Uh, his former mentor turned political enemy, Janet Nguyen, is running for his seat against uh, Cyprus uh, council member Francis Marquez. And so the winner of that will take his seat. Um, Doe had endorsed his chief of staff to replace him, but his chief of staff did not win the runoff election in March. Um, and um, there, it's, I'm hearing there's a possibility that whoever wins in a Nove the November election for his seat may be able to take office a little bit early because of the vacancy. So they may actually, instead of being January, they take office. It might be mid-December or so. All right. Nick Jurda, thank you so much for being with us and for your reporting.